All right, team, we've got a major disaster on our hands. I'm out here next to my ribbon blender. Um, if you guys have uh, followed my channel, I bought this from China. So we imported this out of China, got to New Zealand. Um, quality probably wasn't so good. Um, I immediately had to replace our, um, our motor starter here on it. So I got that done um, and then it functioned a bit better because the first motor starter basically broke out of the box. But now after like, I don't know, six months of use, we have a major, major issue. Looking in here, you'll see the motor here. So that's the motor up there and this is the reducing drive here. So this thing here, um, Basically that motor spins really, really quickly um, and it goes through this big thing on the end here and it goes from quickly to slowly, increases the torque um, and then that spins in there, it spins the um, big ribbon drive to mix everything up. Now the quality is really uh, quite um, substandard to put it lightly. Um, there's a few things wrong with it, there's really poor quality welds. You can see where they've made mistakes and they've cut areas out and they've sort of welded it back up. Just a whole bunch of things that probably shouldn't have been done. But before we turn you on and show you the issue uh, at hand here, um, these pulleys here, these are, are both, this one here was basically falling off and it was like it was like 10 mil sticking out over the end of this um, shaft there, which I've had to tap it further on. And this one here is actually sinking backwards towards the motor. So they're not held in position very well. And that's causing this belt to come out of alignment and come sideways. And it's been chewing out the side of the belt. And I hadn't actually noticed that. So that got away on me, but we tried to do some repairs here now. But the major problem is, and I'll show you, the sound's probably gonna blow the camera out, listen. Oh, that sounds, that sounds really, really bad, right? Um, so that's either a bearing's blown, or I'm guessing it's a bearing, or there's like, I don't know, metal or something's grinding in that reducing drive. You know, and I bought this, and it wasn't that, for something out of China, like, there's others for sale which, I think we're probably of better quality. And I've bought things like my autoclave, which is a really good quality for cheaper. So the amount I paid for this versus the quality of it, um, it's really, really disappointing, especially because they got it from a company which is supposed to specialize in selling you equipment for growing mushrooms, right? So they give you this equipment here, which after six months, it's all breaking down. The pulleys are falling off. It's making gear grinding noises, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got my neighbor coming around right now. He's a really good guy. He's got his own uh, engineering shop just down the road. It's like 200 meters down the road. Um, he's gonna come down, gonna look at it. I'm guessing we're gonna need to pull that uh, reducing drive off. Um, we're probably gonna need to, to change a bearing in it or open it up and see what the problem is. I really don't want to be having to do this right now because I put a lot of substrate through this machine. So I usually do two runs of this and two runs of the ribbon blender here. Two runs of that ribbon blender, or one and one and two throughs, will actually fill my um, steam tank right here. So this is my steam tank, homemade steam tank. Down there you can see my wee homemade boiler, which um, powers it down there. So two runs of this. Uh, if this isn't going to work, then I don't know what we're going to do um, because I don't like dry bagging substrate. Um, I'm super allergic to the soy hull, that stuff there, like painfully allergic to it. So I try not to be anywhere near the dust of it. Um, and dry bagging just won't be suitable for me. So you can see this is the drive here. That's the motor which powers it up there. Um, um, and this is the this is the inside drive. Um, and on the outside, there's a big housing which goes on. Um, and it's got like a sprocket. I can't, it's kind of strange how it steps it down. It steps it down kind of like I don't know how a rotary engine works and it's got a sprocket which goes around the outside of a big one like that there and the big one goes real quick and as it goes round it spins the smaller one or the housing on the outside slower which is directly connected to this drive here which drives the ribbon blender. Um, this has got a whole bunch of sleeves on it. Now those sleeves there are basically bone dry so when they spin on those shafts they'd make a hell of a racket. I think that's what's been causing the noise. Also the shaft on the outside has got a few bearings and some of the some of the shavings just get in where those bearings run and obviously when you get a metal bearing running um, they're like a metal sleeve again and there's a little bit of, of grit in there. You can actually feel the grit which is that the feeling that I've been having when you would spin that outside shaft. So we've got that outside piece off. We've taken it to the engineer down the road and he um, is giving it a bath. He's gonna clean all the grit out. We're gonna clean these when we come back as best we can, get this back together, and hopefully, hopefully, um, it starts working um, without any of the loud noises or any of the um, grit or the feeling of intrusion on there. Um, as I said, this machine is um, 
it's not made very well to be honest and for the price I paid I think it was like three thousand US dollars or something um, it was really overpriced and I think the company that's doing it is taking advantage of the fact that they're probably one of the few mushroom manufacturing places that are quite well known out of China and so they're just trying to make stuff real cheap and sell it for quite a lot because people in the mushroom industry are buying it um, there's not a lot of competition um, for the price I paid to get this landed in New Zealand um, I would have much preferred to have paid uh, triple the price and gotten like a Japanese or an American made piece of equipment um, than this lower price but not very good quality um, Chinese piece of equipment. Here's the other piece of the gear reduction drive here. You can see when I spin the uh, shaft at the back, uh, the center spins reasonably quickly, but the outside piece, the sprocket, spins slower. So we've got the uh, end piece back on there now, um, and that feels a whole lot better to turn there now. Um, before when we were turning it you'd hear crunching sounds and all sorts um, so that immediately feels better we've got oil in it now we've got about two liters of oil so this stuff here this is like gearbox oil um, just a lightweight gearbox oil for gears or diffs um, so that's gone in there um, we've just taken the pulley off here because the pulley had no grub screw holding it in place so it was able to slide back and forth again like should have a grub screw on it to prevent that and it didn't and that's why that was had been moving off so the engineer's gone back to put a wee drill, drill wee hole in it, uh, tap a grub screw in there, so that's good. This one up here actually has grub screws in it, um, so that's good. But he's back now, so we'll get this pulley on, we'll get the belts on, we'll fire it up, and hopefully we can start mixing again. Boom, team, we are done. We have the, um, we have the be belts mounted, we have that, our device back in on here. So in here, you can see, I don't know, it's a bit dark. Um, the belts are back on. The, the the reduction gear is all mounted. We've filled it with oil um, to the level it's supposed to be filled. Um, and now when you turn it on, oh, listen to that sweet, sweet sound. So that's um, working uh, much better than it was right now. So we're happy about that. It's put us back in manufacturing um, about a day. We're supposed to have about 500 kilos of substrate through this today. Um, obviously we haven't uh, been able to get that through this today. So. We'll be putting our batch on tomorrow and then on Saturday we'll have to um, we'll go to the farmer's market and then I'll come home and um, we'll put a batch on when we come home. Uh, mushroom growing, eh? Like, one thing about mushroom growing is if you think you're going to do this, you're going to go down this path and you're not going to have constant issues, then you're wrong, right? Like, this is one thing I learned with mushroom growing is that every week something's going wrong and every week you just have to do your best to fix what goes wrong and move on to the next week. Um, and if you're just always doing that and always looking at ways to make processes a little bit better, um, you will be successful.